what's the story behind Hyro Day, man? Y'all came up with a festival that's one of the top events in the Bay Area and in, in Northern California that I look forward to, um, that thousands of people look forward to every year. Y'all have like three, four stages. Y'all usually have 40, 50 artists. Y'all have top of the line artists. Everybody from the far side and Georgia Ann Muldrow to Juvie and Black Thought and Jay Stalin. Um, what's the concept behind it and how did that start? Uh, so a fan hit us uh, on the internet saying, you know, September 3rd, so 9-3, like 93, which should be Hyro Day. And so, uh, you know, we laughed and, you know, that's cool, that's a good idea. But then Cash was like, you know what, we should throw a block party. So it started as a block party uh, in 2012. I remember. Um, and then it's just grown from there. So we had all our friends come out, you know, Planet Asia, The Grouch, Sinai, you know, Wolfhawk, Jaguar, all that kind of stuff. They came out and rocked and it just kept growing from there and expanding and expanding to now, like you said, it's three stages. We've got a kids area. Um, this year, I think we're going to have a real cool... Uh, cannabis related area as well as a you know a, a bunch of other chill zones and other zones and stuff but we wanted to give back to Oakland because we've been given so much and um, it started off free I mean we've kept it at about at 1993 as the price but we just want to give you know a level talent and uh, you know that level of, of production at a, at a price that's affordable for everybody you know kids are free seniors are free and um, it's just grown bigger than we expected. I mean, this year we're probably gonna do a whole Hyro Day weekend and do like the comedy shows because we got now the Hyro Comedy Circle where we do it's almost like Def Comedy Jam where we do comedy with a with a musical act. We had Young Gully on there and uh, Ryan Nicole, you know, a bunch of folks. Uh, but basically, we want to have comedy shows. We want to have something STEM related for the kids and education related for the kids, a skate contest, and also the the Hyro Day performance. So we're thinking about doing things all throughout that Labor Day weekend. Uh, over in Jack London, you know, perhaps, um, and a few other clubs in the area. And, and just, you know, keep giving back, man. Oakland, think about it, man, the whole world takes from us. And I don't mean that in a bad way, we give, you know, but I mean, you look at some of these uh, liberation movements around the world, you look at uh, just the hippies, you look at the, the style and the trends and musical styles, you look at um, just a lot of thought, and the Bay Area has given a lot to the world. And we just want to keep giving back and enriching that culture. And in the face of, you know, uh, a lot of people from other places coming and gentrification and all these things, we want to welcome them, but also let them know, look, this is a bastion of culture and we have an identity and you need to come and participate in this. Don't come out here and sort of impose your outside weirdness. You know, I didn't grow up with people calling the police on barbecues. You know what I'm saying? No, I didn't grow up with, you know, people calling the cops on somebody selling water. Like that, that's them others that, that not used to uh, people being scrappy and people being um, self-determined and people having freedom to do what they want to do. And when I say people, I mean usually people of color, poor people, et cetera. And they bring in these, these messed up values from other areas. And we're just trying to show that we have a culture. This culture is one of inclusion. We're not saying, hey, this is for us, not y'all. It's for everybody. And that um, we always will continue to be this sort of uh, stronghold of, of culture and, 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 and creation and all that kind of stuff. I mean, even the food, you know, we got a variety of food over there from, you know, like uh, Filipino tacos and, you know what I'm saying? Like a mix of all the stuff that we got. You know, I grew up around all, all different kinds of people and I grew up in East Oakland. So it's just, uh, we want to show, showcase that variety. You know, uh, like I said, there's people in East Oakland with horses and there's people in East Oakland, we, we got a marina, like people with boats, you know, we got, we got crew and all that kind of stuff. I grew up seeing people rowing, I mean, I ain't never do it, but mm -hmm. you know, I've seen folks mm -hmm. rowing at the lake. It's not like Oakland became nice recently. No, it's right. always been beautiful. They just pump crack into it, uh, you know, through COINTELPRO <laughs> and tried in Heron yeah. and tried to destroy the liberation movement. And Strike. this, th we are the children of that. You know, I was born in 75, so I'm like a direct child and descendant of that. You know, I grew up going to Uhuru House and going to Berkeley and drumming and all that kind of stuff. You know, my kids go to Ileoma Day, you know, which my aunt started at school. So it's like, we still here and we're not about to take the, oh, they kicking our behinds, oh, they taking our stuff uh, perspective on it. We're gonna say, hey, look, this is who we are. We're here, come check us out. And perhaps then we can win the hearts and minds of those people who are bringing the messed up values where they feel like there's some sort of racial hierarchy or financial hierarchy 
or that um, they brought all the nice stuff to Oakland. Oakland been nice my whole life, man. We moved here because it was nicer than where everybody else was living in the South or in the back East or whatever. That's why everybody moved here. Right. Well, we was talking a little bit offline right before this interview. We were talking about how, you know, you see the game in terms of marketing and you see, you know, High Row can bring a festival together, but yeah, you said y'all have 40,000 followers on, on certain social media. I mean, how do you explain that? Because more than 40,000 people will come to High Row Day. It's, I really honestly, and I don't know if this is a function of age or whatever, but I don't really understand it. You know, like our, so are we headline tours, right? All over earth, headline. We hop off the plane, there's High Row signs on the freeway. You know right. what I'm saying? Though we in the newspaper and everything. Right. But it's just uh, maybe our fan base is not followers or clickers or whatever, but right. it, it is weird because we headline our tours, they be sold out. Right. And, right. you know, you see people who ain't even toured yet going viral and all this. And I'm like, I don't, I don't understand the algorithm. But uh, I mean, we've been fortunate to be able to still have a strong, loyal fan base, you know? And what's weird is our fans, it's, I can't say it's generational, our fans now was born in 93. Right. Or, or later, you know, like when we go to shows, it'd be 21 year olds, 23 year olds, you know, 93, you'd be 26 this year. But I'm saying everybody is maybe between 30 and 15. It's right. not even the older, the older people ain't even going to shows like You're that. You're right, my 15 year old daughter uh, gets her crew and they go to High Road that, you know every year and oh, yeah. be going for three years. And, so, that, and, right. that's, and that's, I mean, that's across the board, all over right. the earth, you know, wherever we go. So I really just think that I don't understand the algorithm. And as long as we're able to you know, do well without without um, having to understand it. I'm not really worried about the number of followers, but it does perplex me when I see somebody and I'm like, you got 400,000 followers that I've never heard of you, but they probably looking at us the same, like, are you selling out shows? And I've never heard of you, so right. it's the same thing. Well, it's very interesting, the fact that there's a lot of, there's a lot of hip hop money out there. <laughs> Mm -hmm. That's what I think that definitely says. But I mean, man, we definitely gonna have to bring you back. I mean, I wanna definitely bring Tajay back to the Black Report on a regular basis. He's definitely like our Dr. Bo Dr. Boyce Watkins. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? A financial wizard um, behind the Hyro brand. One of the financial wizards behind the Hyro brand. And somebody who is a positive role model in hip hop that's, you know, putting his money to work, developing, and you know, I mean, I mean, I gotta salute you while you're here, man. I mean, it took a lot of, it took a lot of, it took Nipsey Hussle getting killed for the world to really salute him for what he was doing in his area. This our Nipsey Hussle. This Oakland's Nipsey Hussle, one of them, <laughs> and one of the most shining examples. I mean, you've seen the shoes, but y'all gotta come to High Road Day. Y'all gotta get this man to build something for you. You gotta come to this man hotel. You know what I'm saying? The baggy jeans, he said, might come back out. You know what I'm saying? You got some limited edition High Road jeans that might come back out. So I'm saying, we got our own financial wizard. You know, I don't want to be part of those, part of that group of people that Biggie talked about. You nobody until somebody kills you. Mm. Sorry, John, right here. My homeboy, Tajay. Thank you for being on, bro. Hey, one love, man. I appreciate you, man. Right Thank on, you, bro. Man. We out.